Okay, the number two key that we're going to talk about is healing from the trauma of a specific objective beauty st standard. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Healing from the trauma of a specific objective beauty standard. So I've kind of already touched on this when I was talking about going into nature, connecting with mother nature, absorbing the love that mother nature has for every unique organism on this planet. But there's a lie that is sold to us, a huge lie. And we are all so many of us, maybe you are not at this point, but many of us are so brainwashed into believing it that even when we think we don't believe it, we do. And it's because it starts so young and it is so um, pernicious. And it's in these really minute or um, small ways that we don't even notice. It's, it's that every person we see on TV during a certain time looks a certain way, right? It's all the different images that are, were put in front of us in commercials to sell products that, and it sends this message, right? Well, I'm using this person to sell this product. I'm using this woman's woman's body, this person's body, man or woman to sell this product because they're ideal. You don't look like them. You don't have their eyebrows when I'm selling this eyebrow pencil. You don't have this nose when I'm selling this nasal spray. You don't have these shoulders when I'm selling this workout bra, whatever, right? So you aren't this. You don't, you're not a hand model. You don't have these great hands, whatever it is, right? We are sold that there's such a thing as this ideal beauty standard and that it's objective, that it's real. Rather than what it is, which is ever changing, always changing, and always, always um, shifting, depending on what the marketers need to sell a product, right? So if everyone has the perfect eyebrows, well, then we got to change what perfect eyebrows means. If everyone's dieted themselves to nothing, well, then we need to change what beauty means so that we can get them all really buff. Skinny is not enough. Got to be buff now. Oh, now you're all buff. Well, now you got to get curvy. Start eating more. We'll sell you this other thing, right? It's always changing. It's not objective. It's relative. And it's not necessarily ideal. Um, working to shift that view is, it's like, it's like leaving a cult. Um, it's like leaving a cult because we've been so inundated our entire lives with it, especially as um, middle schoolers and high schoolers, that's huge. So it's very foundational parts of our life. Even if you weren't reading all of the teen magazines and things that were popular when I was a teenager, if, even if you weren't you know, watching all the Victoria's Secret ads, um, you need to recognize that. And if you're someone who does fit the beauty standard, that can be especially difficult. So if you're someone who has always fit that beauty standard and then gotten a lot of attention out of it um, until now with your partner who's betrayed you anyway, it can be really difficult to want to leave that objective beauty standard behind because you're like, but I get all this attention from fitting that, right? I still invite you to heal from it because I consider it a trauma that we've been brainwashed into. We need to realize that these beliefs come from either capitalism or past traumas, probably both. Um, so I'll give you a silly example. When I was in middle school, my nose grew a lot faster than the rest of my face. And I was at a sleepover and I woke up and my friends were measuring my nose, <laughs> right? I know right? Gross. Shameful. But, um, you know, different long shaped noses at the time, I guess, weren't in. They thought it was funny. And um, it left a mark at the time. It did. And it, it was something that I felt insecure about. I didn't really pay much attention to it. It wasn't something I looked in the mirror and felt shame about. But when the betrayal hit, it was something that immediately came to me. Oh, I have this huge nose and that's a bad thing and I should feel ashamed of it and it's something that I'm sure my husband is disgusted by on my face and he's checking out other women it's because they don't have right he didn't even think that but it's what came to me because of a past event a past 
trauma. Maybe you think trauma, that's not a trauma. Maybe a lowercase t trauma, right? It's an event that left a mark on me. Um, another event, again, kind of silly to talk about, but certainly left a mark on me. Um, and you may have other ones related to, you know, your breast size during puberty or your belly size during puberty. Those are those events. Um, you might've had parents who were especially shaming on your body. Um, and if you did, we'll talk about what to do with that because it's going to make it even more difficult or they're shaming on their own bodies in front of you, which is very common. Um, so the other the other event was um, I was in sixth grade and we were sitting in these pods looking at books. I can't remember something about whales or sea creatures or something. And this little boy, he was so short uh, in my class. He was so little and um, really funny and really cool. And he looked at me and he goes, oh, my gosh, I am so jealous. You have the best mustache. <laughs> And he was, he was pure genuine, right? He was genuinely so uh, jealous of my mustache. Of course, I was completely horrified. The boy that I had a hardcore crush on was sitting next to me. He starts laughing. It was all boys at this table. He starts laughing. I'm so horrified. Um, I ended up, you know, growing up and, and learning that I had hormone disorder and all sorts of things. So it was beyond just basic facial hair. Um, and that became a really big point of anxiety and shame for me um, after betrayal. It was something that I definitely managed and learned how to manage um, as manage, right? Why would I need to do that? I shouldn't have to do that, but I did. Um, but it was something that came out huge after betrayal where um, I was just hyper-focused on my facial hair, hyper-focused on my body hair. That was actually probably my biggest shame was my body hair. Um, my husband did not actually feel negative feelings towards my nose or my body hair, but I took those ones on. That's how I focused because it was based in, of course, the hairless fad of the, of the early two thousands, which was a huge thing when I was a teenager, but also, um, just that event, which he didn't do anything wrong, but that event started me on this path of feeling a lot of shame about my body hair. And so recognizing that we need to work through those past events, even the small little events that you don't think, oh, you know, I, yeah, I think of that. And when I think of that past event, you might be saying, I, I am flooded with these negative feelings, but this, it's not a big deal. It was literally like this boy in sixth grade, you know, or it was this girl at the lunch table, or it was just some passing comment my dad made. Those events need to be worked through. And certainly we can do that through journaling, through feeling our feelings, if you, if you can. If they are especially um, big and overwhelming, you may consider a trauma therapy like EMDR or ART. I won't spend a ton of time here, but eye movement desensitization and reprocessing or accelerated resolution therapy. You'd have to access that through a therapist who's trained in your state, but those are therapies that can help. And I have, as a therapist, used those a lot with body image trauma. Um, working with a woman I'm thinking of in particular who really struggled with her breast size. She was very fit, very strong, um, had very muscular in, in a very beautiful way, uh, but she felt she couldn't see anything beautiful about her body except that she had small breasts that had breastfed five children or six children. That is all she could see in her body. And um, she, she could not see anything. I mean, it was just a wall of pain. And so we worked through that with EMDR and she was able to really love her body. She went from body hatred to body neutral, to even loving and having gratitude. And part of the work was some of the things, the compassion work that we've talked about. And we did some journaling together and some type of coaching type stuff, but the EMDR um, trauma therapy was especially beneficial. So Shout out to that modality. If you are wondering where to find a therapist like that, you can go to the featured section in our Facebook group and there's some websites there that can direct you to where to go. The last thing, we're kind of running out of time, but I want to touch because it can be such a powerful tool. Again, a coaching tool that you can use is um, using your love of your body from when you were little, bringing that love forward. 
So um, when I taught this course on body shame before and body reclaiming, I always show this picture of my 18 month old and I don't have it up right now, but when my daughter was 18 months old, she was the epitome of self-confidence and body love. Um, seriously, she, whenever she walked in a room, we said her um, theme song was, if you were, if I were you, I'd want to be me too, because she was just like, yeah. And she'd come in the room with her big old diaper and swinging. And the girl had swagger. She loved herself. She loved her body. And every part of her body was just fascinating to her. And we're all like this, um, unless a trauma occurs before 18 months, all 18 month olds love their bodies. If you're ever around a child right now, whether it's your own or um, a cousin or a niece or a nephew or something like that, pay attention, especially before fourth grade. That's about the age where most girls start to have a decline in their sense of self and their body image, which is heartbreaking. Um, pay attention to how they live their life in this world, they are not living in survivor mode. Their inner survivor is not shaming their body as a way to protect themselves. They are loving their bodies. And so you did too. There was a time where you did too. And there's some things you can do to reclaim or take back your body from capitalism, from patriarchy, from the porn industry, from your betraying partner, reclaim it as your own and try to get back into that mindset, even just tiny, tiny bits at a time and find that love. Um, one thing that I did, um, and I'm not sure where I thought to do this, was that I remembered that when I was in about third grade, second and third grade, I played softball and I was terrible at softball, but I would sit in left field or right field where they stick people who are terrible at softball. I'm terrible at all sports. And I would just admire my freckles. And I had a freckle right here. It's gone away now. But I would literally just admire my freckle. And then and, and I had these freckles over here. And um, now I have a lot more. And I just thought, and my scars too. I would admire my scars. And I'd think, man, this is a cool looking scar. I still have it. It looks like an amoeba. It was from a cookie sheet burn, you know? And I would, I literally, I remember that freckle on my, on my palm though. And I would admire it. Like, I'm so cool that I have this freckle. <laughs> it's kind of silly, but you may have had some things like that where you felt like I'm me, I'm me because of this freckle. And maybe that doesn't fit for you because you don't have any memories like that, but finding things like, did you love swinging on the swing set? Did you love playing soccer? Did you like, what did you love doing with your body that just made you feel alive and just enough? And finding those things and admiring or doing those things again, go to the playground and swing on the swing and be in your body and close your eyes and remember what that felt like and reclaim that feeling that you had about yourself many, many, many years ago. Some other things you can do to reclaim your body, um, in addition to checking in with that childhood love that you had towards your body, um, is reclaiming it by changing or doing things with your body for you? Have you always wanted to change your hair a certain way, but you were too afraid of what other people would say? Have you ever always wanted to get a specific piercing or a tattoo that, but you were afraid of what someone else would judge you towards, or they might lust after you. And so you didn't get that. Reclaim your body. It's your effing body. It is your body. So reclaim it. Say, this is my body and I'm going to do with it what I want. Do things like massage if you can. I know, again, things like piercings, tattoo, massage can be really triggering. So if that's too triggering, that's okay. Don't feel like you have to go down a road that's going to trigger you more. These are just examples for some people. So get massages regularly. Get touch, safe, healthy touch. Get acupuncture, safe, healthy touch. Maybe do yoga, gentle sleep, or sorry, gentle yoga that can really help um, just take care in a gentle, kind way. Again, that might be too big, big of a step for you. That's okay. Take it small. I'm just giving some examples. Um, restful sleep. So working on your sleep. Um, I have a sleep training in my um, kayleydunn.com slash links. You can get my sleep training. Start working on your sleep. Doing these things that really are gentle and kind to your body is a way to say, this is my body. I'm not going to drive my car off a cliff because it used to belong to someone I hate, right? This is your body. It doesn't belong to anyone but you. So 
So take care of it and cherish it and reclaim it. Okay. Those are your three keys. One, compassionate love, spending time in that pain, reminding yourself that you're not alone, sending love to your body. Two, healing from the trauma of object objective beauty standard. And three, reclaiming your body, taking ownership, using that love that you may have had for it when you were a little person, reminding yourself of who you are and reclaiming your body. Now, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for everything that you've contributed just in being here and showing your face in this group. And I'm so grateful to have you.